Hi everyone, I'm Rob from Project Sandbox. In this video, I'm going to show you how to actually start editing your video with OpenShot. So the first thing that you need to understand when you're editing a video is how your timeline functions. So this is your timeline down here. So if you'll notice, there's several tracks on your timeline. And then with this one, I have several clips. One of the first things I like to do, because I don't like having this many different tracks, unless you actually need them, is to delete some of the ones that are a little redundant. So I'm gonna just delete it down to three tracks. So how the timeline functions is different for audio than it is for video or, or pictures. If you'll notice, when I scrub over this video footage, you can see that I'm going over top of this ocean footage. And when I move it back and forth right here, you can see it either moves forward or in reverse. But what I can do is if I grab this piece of footage and put it over top of this one, what'll happen is it'll actually block out that ocean footage with these clouds. The reason that is, is because this cloud layer sits on top of this ocean layer. So if for re some reason you're wanting, say your bottom layer to play and that's the one you wanna see, um, but it's getting blocked by another piece of footage, that might be what's happening to you, is you just have one piece of footage over top of another. If, say, I wanted this picture of the cat over top of this instead, I could do something like that. And then this crazy cat would be over top. So just be mindful that the order of layers matters for what shows on top of your video preview. So that's how video and images work sound works a little bit differently. So I'll play this for a sec just for you to see what it actually sounds like. So you'll notice, and I don't actually think these video clips have any sound associated with them. Yeah, these video clips are unfortunately quiet. So what I'll do for you to actually see what I'm talking about is we'll duplicate this and add this to another track. So unlike video footage, sound comes out as one big blob and it doesn't matter how the order happens on the timeline. So if you look at these two, I can play this and it'll start playing this clip. When it gets to this point, it'll start playing both of them equally. So it sounds like a mess, obviously. That's because both clips are playing at the same time. But just be mindful that the order of sound doesn't normally impact your timeline. That's not how you can get one sound to be louder than another. But with video footage, it matters, as long with images, what order they fall on the timeline. So now that we understand how that timeline works a little bit, the next important thing to know is how to start modifying this footage to get it to um, reach the actual lengths you want it to be. So the first thing I'll actually show you is how to edit this little piece of sound, because if you notice, it's a lot longer than all of my images and video footage. So there's a couple ways we can go about doing this. So if I move to one end of the footage, you'll notice that this little uh, cursor changes. And what I can actually do is click right here and drag it to the left or to the right. And what this is doing is it's actually shortening your uh, audio footage. So if we zoom out just with this right here, you can see that I'm making it smaller. The true or the same is true for the opposite end. So if I wanted to cut off the end a little bit, I could just click and drag that to be smaller. Say if you didn't want to modify the ends of the footage and you wanted to modify the center, you would actually use this little scissor tool right here called the razor tool. So if I click on that, once again, you'll see my cursor is actually changed and there's a little line on it. 
So now, when I click somewhere in the center of the footage, it'll split these two clips into separate ones. And then from there, I can click off of the razor tool and I can independently move those two pieces of audio clips. Um, I'm actually just going to delete this one because there's no need for this to be that long. Um, a quick tip is you can actually zoom into your timeline by hitting the plus or equals button. Um, if you ever want to zoom out, you can just hit the minus button. This is really helpful if you're wanting to do some really close up um, cuts, you might want to get in there. Because like if you look right here, I can see right now that there's actually a space in between um, the sky clip and the beach clip. But I wouldn't have known that if I wouldn't have zoomed in. So that's a helpful thing to do just to keep zooming in or zooming out with either the minus or plus key. The next important thing to know about editing is actually what this little magnet means right here. So if you notice, when I click off this magnet, I can move this clip wherever I want to. And you'll see this little guide appear showing you if it's actually on top of other clips and stuff like that. Um, but you'll notice that it's kind of moving really freely. When I click on the magnet, what will happen is my clip will actually snap to the next object closest to it. So this is a really helpful thing to have enabled if you don't want to have any black spaces in between all of your video clips. Because if it gets clipped together like that, you can ensure that there's no space whatsoever in between those clips, which is what you want most of the time whenever you're doing video. The only other thing that I really want to show you with how to actually manipulate these clips is how to bring up your waveform right here. So you'll notice that I have this little audio clip thumbnail. That's not really helpful for us if we want to know what the actual waveform looks like of the sound. So all you have to do to bring up that waveform is right click on your clip, go to display and click show waveform. When you do that, you'll notice that you'll now see where the peaks and valleys of your waveform actually start existing. This is also a helpful way to find out if you have audio associated with a track. So if you noticed at the beginning, I did that with both of these. I just had it from the thumbnail to the waveform. And since the line is at the bottom there, I can see there's no sound associated with that, which is a helpful thing to know if you're expecting there to be sound. If you have any questions about how to do any of this or want me to elaborate further, you know how to get a hold of me now. If you would like to continue learning how to create videos with OpenShot, please watch my next video. In the next video, we're actually gonna start talking about how to add effects to these videos. So how to modify the color and do kind of stuff like that. Um, thank you very much for watching this video and I guess I'll see you in the next one.